Bring yourself into a seated position. Your choice, whether you be cross-legged, kneeling, sitting in a chair, just for these initial moments of preparing for your practice today. To bring yourself into a state of calm composure. When you are relaxed and calm, the body lets go and therefore can enable greater flexibility and suppleness. You might like to close the eyes so that you can tune in to your skeleton and your flow of breath. So allow yourself to begin to surrender softening the skin on your face, especially around your cheeks and your eyes and your forehead. Relax along the jawline and allow your neck and throat to be soft. Release those shoulders down away from the ears. Take a breath in and as you exhale, just take the shoulders back a little so that the shoulder blades draw towards each other and that you open out across the front of the chest, allowing for greater room for the expansion of your lungs. Take a long and full breath in and then release that breath. and then open the eyes. So continuing as well with the general care of our hands, um, we're going to practice the peacock position. And it is simply wrapping each finger above the other. So on your right hand, take the index finger, give it a little stroke, Pull it from the webbing, past the knuckles, to the tip. Do this with each of the fingers in turn on your right hand. It's just a very gentle pull. And then you'll take your middle finger to wrap over your index finger. You'll take your ring finger to wrap over your middle finger. And you'll take your little finger to wrap over your ring finger and then release and let's do the same with the other hand gently a pull from the webbing of the index finger past the knuckle down to the fingertip do the same with the middle finger the ring finger and then the little finger and then you'll take the middle finger over the index finger, the ring finger over the middle finger, and the little finger over the ring finger. And then release. And then give the hands a bit of a shake as if you are shaking off water droplets from the fingertips. And also loosening the wrists and then return to a central position. Let's take ourselves now into a tabletop position. We're going to um, practice the pigeon posture today. So it's going to really open out um, our hips. So to begin with, let's draw our big toes together and widen our knees, take a nice deep breath in, and then exhale, bring the buttocks to the heels of your feet. Now a breath in, rise up through the trunk of the body, extend from the lower, from the lower back, the hips, the tummy, extend upward toward the armpits and the chest, and then lower your body down. So you're taking a torso down between the inner thighs. You might like to briefly rest the forehead to the mat. 
See if you can really keep that connection of your buttocks with your sitting bones. So you want to draw the sitting bones down and back as you extend forward. You've got these opposing forces going on that can work hand in hand. And then breathe in and bring yourself to a tabletop position. Now in this position, you want to um, keep the stomach pulling up and back towards the base of the spine, so it's lending its support rather than allowing the stomach muscles to, to collapse down towards the mat. Keep lifting them up. A little bit of a scoop of the tummy, a tiny tilt of the pelvis. We're going to take a nice deep breath in. We're going to relax in our left hip. And we're going to bring our left foot round between our feet. And we're just going to gently extend our right knee away from us and move into a lunge just preparing the stages before getting to pigeon posture you just want to start relaxing down in the hips stretching through the right thigh muscle keep your shoulders away from your ears keep the breath flowing the teeth unclenched the teeth will tend to clench when you focus and concentrate. So even though focus and concentrating is good, you don't want to have any tension in the face. You want to allow the breath to flow freely. For the breath is your guide. The breath is your energizer, your replenisher. So from here, let's now take a breath in. We're going to take the hips back and straighten the left leg. Extend the body over the left leg. If you feel that you are able, you can relax down through the back of the neck, drawing the nose towards the shin. Really good position this for stretching out through the hamstrings and the calf muscles. So if you're a, a runner, you'll appreciate this position. And then we'll return back to releasing the left leg and returning to tabletop position. Just having a, a check at how you're positioned. You've got your hands shoulder width apart, your knees hip width apart, you're rising up through the arms so avoid crashing your weight down into your wrists. You've actually got this upward energetic elevation from the wrists to the elbows, elbows to the shoulders. You're then going to relax in the right hip, take a breath in and draw the right foot between the hands. Again, no judging if it doesn't happen immediately and you need to actually help the foot forward. That's fine too. As you grow in suppleness and flexibility, you'll find you'll be able to swing that foot round in one. Let's gently now extend back through our left leg, just drawing the back knee, the left knee back a little so that you can Come into this lunge position. Just scan the body, uh, see if you've pulled in any pockets of tension that you can release. And then to a breath in, pulling the stomach in to support the spine as you take the hips and the buttocks back and extend and straighten the right leg softening through the body, relaxing the back of the neck, drawing the nose towards the right shin if you feel able to. If not, you can hold the body up, keep the stomach pulling in so that it's securing the spine. And then return to the lunge briefly 
and then release the right leg and your back once again in the tabletop position. And whilst the rains come down outside, you continue with your practice. That's if it is raining where you are, it's absolutely bucketing down outside here. So, let's go again with that. Relaxing in the left hip. And then swing that left foot between the hands. Adjust and adapt your foundation. And then see if you can just bring yourself to rise up and just gently placing your hands onto your left shoulder, your left uh, thigh. Relax the shoulders and draw up through the trunk of the body. So create space from the hips, from the base of the spine, the front of the torso. Rise upwards, open out your heart space, take your shoulders back. If you feel able, you can lower the hands to relax by the side of the body. And then gently release. A nice breath in and out. And then we'll swing that right foot between the hands. We'll get our position and then pull in the stomach in as we breathe in, as we rise up to bring the hands to rest onto that right thigh. Adjusting and adapting, getting your weight, uh, your total upper body weight, transferring and distributing equally between the front foot and the back shin and front of foot. If you feel able, you can relax those arms by the size of your body. And then release. So let's now take a breath in. As we exhale, just extend our left leg behind us. We're then going to take another breath in and lift the left foot and bend the knee, scoop the tummy and bring that left knee all the way forward between your hands. Stretch back through that right leg. The heel of your left foot will come into alignment almost with your right hip. All depends on how you're feeling in the position, but keep your hands either side of your left knee whilst you rise up through the torso. If you want to, you can use the right hand to just open out the flesh of the right calf muscle, just to give a little bit more room. And breathe. If you feel that you've got good weight distribution and your balance and coordination are in place, you could bring the hands to rest on the front inner thigh. You'll need to activate and engage your core muscles to assist with this. And then release the hands and draw back to a central tabletop position. The other side, let's take a breath in and as we exhale, we'll extend that right leg back. Then we'll breathe in, raise the right foot, scoop the tummy, give a bit of a round of the spine as you bring that right knee forward and through between the hands. And then a nice little stretch back through that left leg, extending from the left hip all the way down to the left foot. Keeping the hands well placed for now, if you prefer to have the palms of the hands down, then fine. You could be on your fingertips. You could even have a little table in front of you if you wanted, so that you could rest the hands on that, or if you feel able, rest the hands on your front inner thigh. 
Relax the face, unclench the teeth, neck and throat nice and soft as the breath flows. Remember to keep activating the core muscles, the stomach muscles. Avoid allowing the tummy to spill forward and down. You want it pulling back to the base of the spine so it grows in strength. And then pull in the stomach in once again as you return to your tabletop position. You might want to give a little bit of a wiggle of your tailbone. Maybe have a little bit of a, a round of the shoulders and the back and then a bit of a concave. So you're going between cat and cow postures. And then return to that central position. So let's extend our left leg behind us. Let's breathe in, raise that left foot. And as we exhale, we're once again bringing that left knee between our hands and taking up our pigeon position. This is just uh, the lower level of pigeon and there are variations. So we're taking it nice and easy just to get ourselves used to opening the hips and the hip flexors. If you like, you could bring your hands in front of you, forearms and elbows to the mat. You could even rest the forehead down. And breathe. Focus on the breath now. Remember, every time you exhale, you surrender. The body becomes soft. It lets go. and then bringing yourself to rise up again. So if this is enough for you, you can stay here or come out of the position. But if you think you can go a little further, take a nice deep breath in and allow the right knee to bend. Release the right hand and see if you can bring that right hand round to reach the front of the right foot. If you feel that you are able to release the left hand and capture round the foot as well, then do so. But you really do need to have uh, your balance and coordination here. So only, only practice that if you feel able to. If, if you prefer, keep your hand resting onto the floor beside you. When you release the right foot, do so nice and slowly and control the descent of the right foot. Be careful not to let go too, too quickly and it sling back and down. Let's turn those right toes under. Take a nice deep inhalation and just lift and bring yourself back to a tabletop position. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's go on the other side. Let's extend that right leg behind us. Then breathe in, raise the right foot. And as you exhale, scoop the tummy, create some space so you can bring that right knee forward and through. Extend back through the left leg. Find your balance. Find where it's comfortable and to begin with, it may take some time for you to let go in the hips. The tension can be there in the mind as well. So it's all about allowing the mind to get into the hips and tell them to release and relax, to open, to surrender. If you feel that you want to do one of the variations of bringing the hands forward, then do so. Placing your elbows in the position that's good for you. Allowing your forehead to come down towards the mat. Let go of those upper back muscles. Release any tension you may be harboring in your shoulders. Remember tension can unravel 
with exhalation. Allow your breath to guide you. And then bringing yourself upright once again. And if you want to move to the next stage, then we'll do so by bending that left knee. Release the left hand and swim it all the way round. So it's 180 degrees coming round to collect the left foot. So keeping your right hand as a stabiliser here, unless you want to release that hand and bring it round to connect with the foot and then extend and stretch up through the trunk of the body. Keep the breath flowing, keep the tummy active and then releasing and ensuring that when you release the left foot you do so carefully and consciously so that you can allow it to straighten under your control rather than just sling back shot and leaving the hand too quickly. Then let's turn those left toes under, breathe in, pull the tummy in and bring yourself back to a tabletop position. Let's bring the knees and the feet together. Let's bring the buttocks to the heels of the feet. And then a breath in and extend through the torso, coming into pose of a child. Draw the arms alongside the body, fingertips coming down to the same direction as the toes. And let go. Really soften and release. And then keeping the chin on the chest, restack the bones of your spine, pulling the tummy in as you do so, to bring yourself once again into an upright seated position. Kneeling, if possible, if not, if you want to go into a cross-legged position or to sit on a chair, then that's fine too. Let's take the pose of contemplation. We'll place one palm on top of each other, point of thumbs touching. Close the eyes. Rise up through your torso. Sit tall. Breathe. And just absorb the experience of the movements you have just flowed through. Notice any slight changes inside of you, outside of you. Acknowledge how you feel internally, externally. And then we'll open the eyes to bring the hands to the heart space, place of all truth, to give thanks to yourself for your practice, to give gratitude for the abundance of the universe. which is there every day in. And stay safe in the knowledge that yoga brings great benefits to those who persevere.